Welcome to SVG TV News for Thursday, December 22, 2016. I'm Lafern Fraser with the details. Close to 30 disgruntled workers at the St. Vincent Shipyard Limited were up in arms today when they received only a fortnight pay for two months' work. When SVG TV News team visited the site, the employees who were protesting with a placard refused to work and barricaded the vehicle of the managing director, Daniel Raverty. The strong presence of police on the compound and in the main office building was an indication of the heightened frustration of the workers' efforts. Efforts were made by some of them to negotiate a second fortnight pay, but this was met with some resistance. Some of the frustrated workers took the opportunity to express their disgust with the situation. We demanding all the money. You have us. We need to half a pay. We cannot, what, what, what do we expect to do with Christmas? Yeah? But you don't buy what you got to buy. You can't even drink a beer or something for yourself. I got some more bills to pay. So we want to demand that the man got to give you all the money today. Everybody got to get together and go upstairs and demand the money. There's the whole thing shut down. It cannot work. So what, when, when, when you found out that you only have a fortnight, what did you guys do? Well, we were speaking up there and we, the guys up there trying to get, we tell them we were to pay with two fortnight, right? And Sat said, he said, no, he only one fortnight he can pay. So we didn't decide for that. So then you guys started protesting, what did you do? Well, we just protest and we tell him we we, we ain't settle for one fortnight. It's a sad situation to see that we worked so hard. Ten early November we woke in and they keep pushing us, telling us they do not have no money for us, but we insist that we will work because we expect that by the end of the year something will come. And when we come to work today, at PD today, they're telling us they own copy us 10 days pay. From, and we feel it is very sad for, uh, 10, for we get 10 days pay when we deserve to have at least a month pay. So it, it ain't right and we, right now we are keeping up work, we're not doing the work because if they cannot come up with money, we, we ain't know what's going to take place here today. I come to work for money. I don't come here to skulk. I get up Monday morning and I came down here and walk from 8 o'clock in the morning till 3 o'clock next morning. I come back the next morning and walk the same way till 12 o'clock in the night. I come back again and I do this pretty boat to make sure that they boss them get money. The people them for the boat is telling us that they are paying the money to make sure we go get paid. It's not easy. Now the boss man come in and tell me he only go pay me one fortnight. So all them tell me walking, I can't walk, that's that killing me. Huh? I have bills to pay. Yeah, I have bills to pay, I got house rent all thing to pay. How they want me to eat? How you want me to feel? We have families, everybody got family, we have children, everything to eat. What? Now it's Christmas. You can't come and give me two hundred uh, 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 some man to get a two hundred and fifty dollars. That can't pay that, that can't go for family. Meanwhile, managing director of the St. Vincent Shipyard Limited, Daniel Rabbity, is calling for understanding and cooperation with what he describes as a cash flow problem facing the company. Rabbity, who has been running the company for close to two years now, says that when workers don't show understanding, this brings bad publicity and escalates the situation. I'm still finding the investors. I'm still collecting my receivables. I'm still bringing boats into the shipyard. I'm still doing what I have to do to continue with the place, regardless all the bad publicity. Making a bad situation worse will not help nobody. Nobody. Not the country, not the workers, not the government, nobody. Because right now, this is a breadfruit tree. For everybody. For everybody. So, what do we have to do? Try to keep it up. We're not going to come with an axe and shove it out. I mean, what I'm trying to say is, yes, we are facing problems right now, serious cash flow problems, okay? We are working to get out of that jam, but we also need some understanding and we also need some reason from the people to let us bear with this. Ravity also expressed concern about the violence meted out to a Venezuelan employee who was allegedly hit with a metal pipe by two local workers.
I would like to tell I would like to tell to the workers that the night is darker before it dawns. I would like to tell to the workers that regardless they don't believe in me and regardless they don't believe in the management all right regardless all of that this is the only thing they have and we have to everybody work together to get it going because if the company is shut down tomorrow they are going to be unemployed i'm going to be in legal problems and everybody's going to be in a bad position so you don't have faith in me don't have faith in me but believe in the company, respect <coughs> your work, be professional at your work. That's what I want to say to the workers. What I want to say to the workers is if you want to demand money, you don't have to hit a guy with a pipe. You don't have to smash the property. You don't have to do what you're doing. You, 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 take, you took the barricade, right? I'm hostage. Tell me if that is not a criminal offense. Tell me if coming two guys, two guys coming with pipes to hit one man unarmed and unprevent is not a criminal offense. So I understand the frustration. I understand the anger. Observing the unfolding events at the marina today were members of the opposition New Democratic Party, the NDP, who expressed dissatisfaction with the situation. The team accused the trade union movement of having a lack of involvement in the matter and criticized the government of being delinquent in carrying out due diligence when seeking investors for the country that the requisite work that was to be done by the administration of state to ensure that the company taking over this project would have been in a financially sound position to ensure that local workers are compensated. We are satisfied in our minds that that was not done and, and today this is a reflection of what we have before us. We in the New Democratic Party, we are opposed to such, to such an organization in terms of people coming into the country and taking advantage of our local people. This is something that we must stop and as a party that's why we're here. We know that our hands are tied in terms of to do anything for the workers but we come here to show some solidarity with them because we understand what they are going through and we want to show them that this is a part that cares about people. understand what role the trade union is playing in this because clearly the workers are not benefiting at all. There, there's not one iota of evidence that the workers are not performing at the optimum best. There's nobody that can argue that. These workers have been given their all and the, the results show them. No management or anybody can say anything other than that. And on top of that, work is coming in and going out all the time. So why on earth are they not um, paying the workers? How, how can you tell me that you, you want to do a business, you have a plant operational, you have work going on continuously, and the key people who are to make that business successful, you're not looking after their interests. Why, where is the trade union in all of this? So right now you see in the background is the police vehicle with Mr. Rabiotti, the managing director of the Otley Oil Shipyard, being escorted by the police as well as one of the members of the Venezuelan workers of the Otley Oil Shipyard who was reportedly injured by two Vincentians, allegedly injured by two Vincentians, leaving the Otley Oil Shipyard being escorted by the police. So it's a situation here where he is leaving now to see if he can get further monies to pay the workers so the workers have allowed him to leave with the barricade and with the police and the police are escorting him to leave the compound so that he can get more money as he says to pay the workers reporting for SVG television news I am Sharon Garraway and General Secretary of the National Workers Movement Noel Jackson described the standoff at the Audley Hall Marina today as absolutely terrible. Speaking with SVG TV News via telephone, Jackson disclosed that the dispute escalated due to lack of communication between the workers and employers over a compromise in salary payments. He explained that initially it was agreed that the workers would receive four weeks wage payments. However, due to insufficient funds, the management reduced the payments to two weeks. Though he was not present at the marina today, Jackson said he acted as a mediator between the workers and management and urged the managing director, Daniel Rivotti, to speak to the workers on any developments and at least give them three weeks' wage payments. Mr. Rivotti, you need to go and speak to your employees 
and tell them that you are going to make an effort to pay three weeks pay because they seem willing to compromise on three weeks pay, but you need to go and speak to them. Well, Mr. Rivati called me back and tell me that um, he basically was going to make a big effort to pay the three weeks pay. So I called the guys again and I told them, and they said to me that Mr. Rivati did not come to them to speak to them. So, Mingus too went, I sent him to speak to Mr. Rivati and tell Mr. Rivati he needs to come and speak to his, his employee. Then I got a call from Mr. Rivati indicating to me that someone had taken a piece of pipe and hit one the Venezuela on his foot and on his elbow. And I must come down there now. I said to him that I am not coming there because I spoke to him already on the issue and I think that he ought to deal with it. If he has a problem, that he call in the police if he thinks that there's going to be violence. Jackson further explained that the National Workers' Movement does not condone employers not paying their employees. When asked about the plans moving forward for the marina, Jackson said at present it is unstable. The situation that St. Vincent Shipyard Limited may have to fold up, it cannot be sustained. Because in truth and in fact, a worker can be working under those conditions. And then you're owing left, right and center. It's just an unsustainable situation. And I think that naturally, throughout a natural process, it's going to unravel itself. A flood watch is in effect for St. Vincent and the Grenadines until 12 p.m. tomorrow, Friday, December 23rd. According to the Meteorological Office, a trough system located across the island chain generated cloudy to overcast skies, moderate to heavy showers, periods of rain, thunderstorms, and occasional gusty winds across the southern Windward Islands through th throughout the day. Most of the significant convection during the day occurred east of the island chain and over open water. However, forecast models indicate that deteriorating conditions are likely across St. Vincent and the Grenadines during tonight and early tomorrow. Rainfall accumulations of at least 75 to 100 millimeters or 3 to 4 inches are possible. Due to the already saturated nature of the soils, the flood watch has been issued. A flood watch is issued when conditions are favorable for flooding. It does not mean that flooding will occur, but that it is possible. The Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force says they are taking a proactive approach in dealing with mentally unstable persons. The statement comes on the heels of Wednesday's killing of Avidonna Mackenzie Williams, whose throat was slashed in the presence of two of her children by a man reportedly suffering with mental illness. Less than two months ago, four persons were killed in a matter of hours by a young man also deemed to be mentally unstable. When asked if Vincentian should be concerned about these persons becoming threats in society, Police Commissioner Acting Reynold Hathaway said it is something to be scrutinized keenly. Mr. Force, we have had such a large number of homicide involving mentally unstable persons. To say it is a rising concern will not be probably an accurate statement, but it is a concern that we will have to pay special attention to. And again, as emphasized, we have been working and we will continue to work with all stakeholders to see how best the issue can be addressed. And Deputy Commissioner of Police Acting Colin John explained that the police takes matters involving mentally unstable persons seriously. It's possible to react to uh, the dealing situations when they arise in terms of mentally challenged persons. When police call out, they try to respond as quickly as possible to apprehend those persons. We also take a proactive approach in that we would assist in taking persons to the mental health center to get their treatment from time to time. At several districts, relatives may come to the police station and ask them, okay, say that this person is due for his medical checkup at the mental health center at this point and ask the police to assist. And we do that from time to time. So we are taking proactive approach in that regard. We, unfortunately, this thing occurred 
and really we would like to express our condolences to the relatives and friends of the persons who were affected but we are trying to do the best as we can and working along with the mental health center and the medical personnel to try and deal with situations like this. Outlining the challenges that come through working with mentally unstable persons, Assistant Commissioner of Police in Charge of Crimes, Frankie Joseph, appealed to family members to take up the responsibility of ensuring that these persons get the necessary help and take their medication. It is really a challenge when we have mental, mental patients who would get involved in, in, in these kind of activities. One of the things that we have to realize also is that we cannot keep mental patients at the mental um, institution for life. Okay, it's not a death sentence. Um, it is really unfortunate that, that um, one of the things I would like to say to relatives who have mental patients is that they need to continuously monitor them. If they realize that they, 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 they require their treatments and they cannot undergo that by themselves, is to, is to call the police because we are ready to assist. Because, you know, if, if they do not get their treatments, actually it boils back down to the police if they get violence and, and commit, um, commit these crimes. Stressing the need for persons to be able to identify illegal drugs in their various forms, members of the Narcotics Department of the RSVG Police Force at the Crime Prevention Exhibition yesterday urged the general public to be very cautious when they believe they have come in contact with these illegal drugs. Advising persons to contact the authorities when they are uncertain of items they have come in contact with, Constable Kerry Otley said individuals react differently to various drugs, which, which can in turn lead to health challenges or even incarceration. You might see somebody in the street smoking marijuana and that's their day-to-day -day thing, okay? But you do not know what effect it would have on your body, because your body is different than anybody else's. We encounter persons who say that somebody gave them the bag to take to somebody else. However, they do not know what is inside of the bag. Upon checking the bag, it's either marijuana or cocaine, okay? And most of the time, these individuals are innocent all right so my caution to you is that even though you know the individual who you're doing a favor to okay make sure you are aware of what is inside of the bag ask check it for yourself right then and there before you even move if you're uncertain as to the contents contact us all right that's four five six four one zero eight or four five seven twelve eleven all right and we will come to your aid and identify these different these are drugs noting that persons have the responsibility to make themselves aware of these drugs and their effects constable Offley further appeals for the support of the general public to assist the rsvg police force in their crime fighting efforts it's not, it's not that it's a my thing, okay, because that's my job. It's a we thing, okay, because you have the information out there. If you do not bring the information to me where in which we can act on it and take these, these drugs and these guns off the street, then it would affect you in the long run because these individuals who are smoking the crack cocaine and so forth, they're going to break into your home, all right? They're going to rob you when you're going to your home and then you're to say St. Vincent is no longer safe, but you're not doing your part to help us to make St. Vincent safe. So I'm appealing to you, all right, you have the information, give us the information. Let us do our part to keep St. Vincent and the Grandin safe so you can enjoy your peace and quiet. Residents in Langley Park in the Georgetown area today Morning, our mourning the death of a beloved young man, a 40-year-old Vansit Balcom. Balcom was killed at around 5 p.m. on Wednesday. According to reports, Balcom was involved in an argument with a fellow villager, Antonio Simon, over what could be deemed as a trivial matter. The altercation reportedly resulted in Balcom receiving several stab wounds about his body. He was rushed to the Georgetown Hospital where he was pronounced dead upon arrival. His death brings the nation's homicide rate for the year to 37. 
Meanwhile, the police say an investigation has been launched into the death of Pole Yard resident 35-year-old Desroy Richards, who was reportedly shot while attacking a police officer with a cutlass on Wednesday morning. According to the police, preliminary investigations are that a police officer approached Richards at a home in the Arnesville area at about 6.30 a.m. on Wednesday and informed him that he was wanted as a suspect in relation to a November 23, 2016 robbery with a cutlass as well as a series of burglaries. It is reported that Richards grabbed a cutlass and attacked the police officer. The police officer immediately fired a warning shot into the air, but Richards continued his charge at that police officer and had to be neutralized. He received a bullet wound to his side and was immediately rushed to the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital by police officers. He was pronounced dead on arrival. In an interview with SVG TV News on Wednesday, Richard's girlfriend expressed anger at what transpired and said Richard's death could have been avoided had the police handled the matter differently. While she admitted that her boyfriend tried to escape from the police by hiding under the house of a neighbor, according to her, they could have handcuffed him or even tied him up but not shoot him, which subsequently led to his death. Motorists on the windward side of the island can expect an ease getting to and from capital Kingstown with the reopening of the Argyle Main Road. This announcement was made by Minister of Transport and Works Julian Francis this evening, who told SVG TV News that the road was expected to be opened from 5 p.m. today. I'm, I'm, I'm just pleased, this is Julian Francis, I'm just pleased to announce that the Windward Highway has been reopened. We are doing the a repair work, we road buckled a couple of weeks ago, it took us a month and uh, we are complete. So persons traveling in and out of the city now to north and south can travel back on the regular windward highway. So there's no need to turn off and go down to the other wing road. Okay, and that's All the right? bypass road, right? That's the way you were using before. Yes, no need to go back down there. Unless you enjoy the drive down there, you can go down there. Okay. It's beautiful down there. Right. But the, the, the main road is open. It's, it's open back up to traffic from 5 o'clock.